Welcome to Electrified. My name is Dylan Loomis, and in today's episode, we'll cover some Tesla news. Thank you for your patience over the past week and the lack of content. I had the opportunity to visit my sister, who I see once a year at best, so I took advantage of that opportunity. Thank you to all of our patrons. Your monetary support really is starting to help balance out the volatility that is YouTube ad revenue. So thank you to each and every one of you. The first news item I'd like to cover today is a Tesla cold weather performance update. This is a software and potentially a hardware update on some of the newer Model 3 and Model Ys. Not everybody has this one yet, but as a Northwest resident, Pennsylvania to be specific, I'm obviously concerned about the cold weather performance. For those of you who may not know, Tesla has historically had issues with the charge port being frozen shut, windows not opening, door handles getting jammed because they essentially ice and freeze over. Tesla initially did release a software update to help with some of those issues. There have been plenty of DIY hacks in terms of things that you can spray over the window seals and the door handles. But of course, eventually Tesla needs to have an in-house solution to some of these problems. A lot of people eventually suggested adding a heater to the charge port that would fix the problem. And now we are learning that Tesla may have done just that. It's really only been mentioned by the YouTube channel Jerry Rig Everything when Tesla invited him to the Model Y's cold weather testing, which they did in Alaska. But now some Model 3 and Model Y owners are getting an update on 2020.40 that says, your car can now use the charge port inlet heater to help defrost the inside of the charge port. The charge port inlet heater can be activated in cold ambient temperatures by enabling preconditioning using the mobile app, activating the rear defrost button on the vehicle's touchscreen, or preconditioning the vehicle using scheduled departure. But as mentioned, some owners of older Model 3 cars that are getting this 2020.40 software update only have other features and they're not getting this cold weather performance update. And if you are a Model 3 or a Model Y owner and you wouldn't mind letting us know below if you got the update 2020.40, and if yours in particular had this cold weather performance update. So the next news item for today, you've probably heard by now, but Tesla will be using the LFP battery in their made in China Model 3. And so this is a big deal because not only does the LFP tech improve the range by roughly 14 miles on the standard range plus version, it also decreases the cost by over $3,000. And so for all of us US residents, I do believe at some point in the future, it makes sense for Tesla to implement this LFP tech in the Fremont made Model 3 and Model Y. So if they do get this into the US versions and the cost goes down roughly $3,000 with a range increase, that is a big, big deal. And if you're wondering how Tesla is able to achieve this using a less energy dense LFP technology to actually increase the range, a lot of it is done by efficiencies elsewhere in things like the HVAC and the drivetrain, reducing overall weight of the vehicle. Tesla continually iterates on all of these other factors that enhance the range so they can use less energy dense cells but achieve better range numbers. And as you probably know, one of the most important things for Tesla is going to be driving down the cost of the vehicles. It's funny because every time they do it, Wall Street seemingly hates it saying, oh, they're cutting the cost of their cars, ha they have a demand problem. Well, that's not even close to the case. Elon and Tesla know they need to drive the cost down to make these vehicles more affordable for the mass market so we can see that adoption curve start to ramp. So this LFP technology and all the other efficiencies are yet another step in that direction, which is very exciting. The next news item for today, we get some news that a Spotify C-suite member and Goldman Sachs are backing what you could call a Tesla competitor when it comes to the recycling space. Now, I won't spend a whole lot of time here because I know battery recycling isn't a sexy topic, not that many people are really interested in this space yet, but for those of you who like to be ahead of the curve, Northvolt is going to be a name to keep an eye on. So as mentioned, Spotify's co-founder and chief exec Daniel Ek is among a group of investors along with Goldman Sachs and Volkswagen that have decided to back this Northvolt company 
which is a high-tech battery company founded by two former Tesla execs. This Northvolt company is located over in Sweden and they're focused on building the world's greenest battery and they just announced on Tuesday that they had raised $600 million in equity. This money will be used to fund building the world's largest lithium ion battery recycling facility as well as research and development. The company just brought in seven new investors in their latest funding round, including the people just mentioned and Bailey Gifford, who, if you remember, is a Scottish asset manager that is one of Tesla's largest independent shareholders. Now, Northvolt is a relatively new company founded in 2016 by two former Tesla execs, and their mission is essentially competitive to Tesla as part of their focus is on batteries to be used in the next generation of EVs. It has already partnered with BMW, Volkswagen, and a lesser known Scania. So I wanted to get this out there as a name to keep an eye on in the coming years. I know some of you are indeed looking to start investing in the battery recycling space. So this is something to consider. Because if you remember from battery day, Elon and team did say that in the future, their new batteries will come from recycling because it's much more economical to get new batteries from the batteries that are already made as opposed to going back to the mining space. So once again, right now, not a huge deal, but in the future, recycling will be massive to the lithium ion industry, which will be a big part of the EV future for the next 20 to 50 years. Also, one quick tweet I wanted to share from while I was gone is from a few days ago, which in Tesla news feels like a few years ago, but important nonetheless in case you missed it. Holmar's catalog said, Elon, are you making 4680 sales with three different cathodes? Or when you talked about a diversified approach, were you talking external suppliers? Elon responded, suppliers, we're only doing high energy nickel ourselves, at least for now. Also, maybe the presentation wasn't clear that we've actually had ourselves in packs driving cars for several months. Prototypes are trivial, volume production is hard. So Tesla already has 4680, the new sales in vehicles on the road for testing. No, not production vehicles, not cars that have been delivered, just cars that are on the road driving. So it's pretty clear that the new Plaid Model S specs and the new Raceway performance numbers were due to the 4680 sales being in that prototype car. Now, the last news item that I wanted to cover for today has to do with Q3 deliveries. We should get the actual numbers reported either pre-market tomorrow, which will be Friday, or sometime in the very near future. We'll once again go back to the well that is Gary Black as he compiled some of these numbers from Bloomberg. As you can see, this chart is going to show historically what the stock price has done around these volume delivery announcements and then the later earnings per share announcements. On the left, you have quarter four 2019 and then down from there all the way up to Q3 of 2020. The deliveries report date, as you can see, it's typically the second or third of the following month after the end of the quarter. He tweeted, over the past three quarters, Tesla volume day has been a good source of excess returns. Third quarter volume day is Friday, 10-2, with release likely pre-market. Troy tests like 144,000 estimate versus 141,000 Wall Street estimate. Over the past three quarters, volume day has delivered an average of 5.5% return. Buying on volume day and holding four days has averaged a positive 14.5% return. So looking at that chart, that final statement that he said, day plus one, two plus five at the bottom, the average for the past three quarters has been a positive 14% return from the day that they released their numbers to five days following the announcement. Now, this next chart that you're looking at now also adds in the earnings per share announcement day, which historically has been a few weeks after the delivery numbers. I'll leave this chart on the screen as I read the tweet that went with this picture. He said, here's how to read this chart. If you bought Tesla on volume day and held until one day before earnings since investors sell the news, you made returns of positive 31%, 67% and 32% after quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three, respectively. In each quarter, volumes beat expectations. Third quarter expectations are 137,000. So of course, don't take any of this as gospel. I wouldn't trade on any of this news unless you were planning to do so. Otherwise, always do your own homework. But I thought it was interesting to note and pretty cool to take a look at historically over the last few quarters, how the stock has traded. 
So in summation, what Gary was getting at is that the delivery volume numbers have historically been a positive short-term catalyst for the stock, while the earnings per share and financial reports have been the opposite, as it's been a sell the news type situation for Wall Street. Now, it's important to note that these numbers in the long run are essentially irrelevant. These month to month, quarter to quarter changes in the grand scheme of things mean very little, but it's good to give you some context and it's fun to go through the numbers and see what's going on. And one last piece of news for today, I wanna update you on the short interest for Tesla. Taking a look at this chart, Tesla's short interest is roughly $24 billion or 57 million shares shorted, roughly 7.7% of the float. So far this year, the shorts are down $27.6 billion in 2020 mark to market losses. So to all of the Tesla short sellers out there, we are not sorry, we told you so, but you're gonna do what you're gonna do. But that will wrap it up for today's episode of Tesla News. Thank you guys for watching until the end. If you did, I really appreciate it. Please like this video. It definitely helps the channel as well. Consider subscribing for more Tesla content and I will see you all in the next video.